it is q4 and i am alive question have you ever thought about not starting something because what if you don't get to finish it before i started my online journey in 2020 i honestly thought that i could just go through life working at nine to five go to work make money spend it and do it all over again and that actually became boring after a while a part of me was so afraid that if I started something that I really, really loved and I was like really passionate about, that I wouldn't be able to see it through. What if something happened? What if something happened to the thing that I was passionate about? What if something happened to me? The reality is that it has been two years. Did I say three? We, it, it's been three years. We're entering into the fourth year of being online. I am entering the fourth year of having my online business and it's been a journey. This is Q4 Rundown. We became writers because more than anything, we wanted to share our stories with the world. But the reality is becoming a successful author requires more than brainstorming, outlining and editing. We realized that without an audience, our books would never reach our readers' hands. So we have to take action. I'm Joe Nicole, and I'm on a mission to help you get your books visible and into readers' hands. To do that, we need to work together. You need to continue to write your story, and I will provide you with the strategies and resources you need to become the success you were meant to be. This episode is brought to you by the Target Reader Mini Course. Get 20% off your purchase, identify your perfect readers for your book, and put yourself on the path to writing success in as little as 30 minutes a week. You can grab your mini course at jewelspaces.com forward slash mini course. Welcome back to the Books, Bluff and Business Podcast show. I am your host, Jewel Nicole, and it is the end of the year. One of the things that I learned this entire year is that I needed to reach out to persons. So I think I'm waiting for persons to come and discover me and for things to really blow up that is never ever ever going to work and so i'm really excited to be talking to you today because we're going to be talking about that in addition to many other things by the way let me just paint a picture in your mind as to where i am i am i have moved house again can i say that can i say i've moved house again basically i am on vacation and it is amazing the previous episodes that I have been recording I have been recording not in my regular place where I'm like sitting down in my uncle's vehicle and recording on my tablet no I've been recording at another house like another vacation you know peace of mind house and today I'm also recording at another vacation house where I get a full look at the sea and it is beautiful honestly enjoying the view because I can go literally anywhere in the world and still be able to record a podcast episode and get it uploaded and talk to you and let you know what is what. And this is one of the dreams that I've had for the longest while. And honestly, it's being fulfilled. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to be here with you today because we're going to be talking about everything that happened throughout this entire year. And also, I'm going to be sharing with you something that I did that really helped me to be successful for the year 2022. So first of all, let's talk about what happened in last quarter. Last quarter, some of the things I wanted to accomplish in this quarter were 200 subs on YouTube by December. I wanted to increase my podcast downloads. So I wanted to have about 250 downloads, averaging 50 downloads per episode. I wanted to dive into writing another book, which would have been the 30 day writing challenge that we had in November. So that was NaNoWriMo in November. And so I wanted to do a 30 day writing challenge for that. So that was three things I wanted to accomplish in this quarter. Let us start with writing. So this past November, I did take part in NaNoWriMo. I wasn't able to maybe 50,000 words, but I did add over 20,000 words to my latest book in progress. And I was really happy with it. One of the struggles I was having with writing that book is direction, like sense of direction, because the book is based off of some recent struggles that I have encountered. And so I need help to get back into those feelings to really understand what 
I felt in that situation for me to continue writing that book. So that's really on hold right now. Another thing I wanted to do was podcast increase. I wanted to increase my downloads to 250 downloads before the year was up. So 250 downloads, 50 downloads per episode. I just want to say that I literally just checked and I am at 400 downloads at the time of this recording with 25 downloads per episode. That for me is mind blowing and very exciting to even think about the fact that persons are actually listening to what I'm saying. Honestly, I am shook. I interviewed another author for my show, which was Ruth Mini. We had such an amazing conversation where we shared some tips on what to do to get your book into the library. To this day, that episode has the most downloads on my show and it has given me the idea or cemented the idea in my mind that I need to do more interview style based episodes on the show because you seem to love it. So if you're interested in listening to that episode, I'm going to leave the link in the show notes so that you can head across and listen to the episode and listen to the amazing conversation we had. Find out how you can get your book into the library. Like find the tips that we shared in that conversation and see how you yourself can benefit from what was said. The third thing would be to have YouTube subscribers. Now I mentioned that I wanted 200 subscribers by the end of the year. And let me just say, this was a little surprising for me because I thought 200 subscribers was a lot, like how I thought 200 podcast downloads by the end of the year would be a lot. Apparently, not for you. Because I received so much support this year, I did not have 200 subscribers, but at the time of this recording, I do have 306 subscribers on my YouTube channel which is amazing. I gained a whole 106 subscribers in that span of time. For me, it's really exciting because I've had eight subscribers on my YouTube channel for the longest while. And embarrassingly, four of those persons were actually four of my Google accounts. So to have 306 persons who are enjoying what I'm doing on YouTube, that for me is very, very exciting. I try to upload four times a week on YouTube and my YouTube channel is nothing about business. Just for a little bit more clarity, it's not about business, it's about gaming. It's something that I love. I love gaming. It's one of my favorite games that I play on YouTube. And so it's purely a gaming channel. And in my free time, I game and then I upload the gameplays and the tutorials and other video types. I have story based videos based on that game and so it has taken time but it has also been very rewarding and persons are enjoying the content that I'm putting out on YouTube so I'm pretty excited about that and going back to what I said about what I learned at the beginning of this episode about reaching out to people I have emailed a few YouTubers to do collaborations with them I've gotten positive responses so far so I think I have about three persons who responded yes they would love to in the new year So I'm really excited about that because we are encouraged to collaborate with other YouTubers in the same niche or in similar niches to us so that we can complement each other and allow each other to grow. So I'm really excited about that. Next thing would be Etsy shop updates. I don't know if you know, but I have an Etsy shop. I have one Etsy shop. I am thinking about opening another Etsy shop this year. We'll see how that goes. I started my Etsy shop in 2020 of September. So September 2020, I decided, you know, I'm going to open a shop, an Etsy shop. That was nine months after I registered my business and I have a business online. In the last two months, that is when I decided to take myself more seriously. I have mentioned my shop here. It's Meet Your Milestones. It's a principal planner company. We are changing into just not principal planners, but digital planners as well, too. And I do have author wear. So we have like t-shirts and things like that. So it's no longer going to be a principal planner company this year, but we are branching off into other things and other author accessories so that we can have our writers pretty comfortable and meeting their milestones. However, 
we have been doing really, really well, I would say, in the shop, provided that I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But in the last two months, I decided to listen to a few videos and try to follow what they are saying keep up with it for an entire month and I was able to get some sales and I was really really excited about that because I saw it working one of the things with me is that if I'm doing something I need to see it working I must see some sort of result to help me to continue going on even if it's a short result even if it's a small milestone that was been even if it's a small milestone that has been accomplished I need to see something and so that happened and so most recently this month i released my digital version of my writing planners with digital stickers which is exciting because a lot of persons have been asking for the digital version of the principal planner so i have been working really really hard at releasing that and coming this january i'm going to be releasing the entire collection in january so stay tuned for that head across to jewelspacious.com forward slash shop and you can shop from a wide range of not just printable planners, but digital planners, stickers, and clothing. So please do enjoy. One of the key takeaways for SD is to be on the platform daily. So you have to be uploading new listings. You have to be searching out keywords. You have to be doing keyword research. And you have to be like uploading new photos and things like that. So you must be on the platform daily in order for you to see some sort of return on investment. And that is one thing I don't mind doing early in the morning. I would wake up after I've done everything I need to do. And I would spend about a half an hour on the platform doing what needs to be done. So it can be done. When I checked my shop manager and I checked the analytics every single day, I would see the increase of views and persons who viewed it in that hour, persons who viewed it in that week or in that month. So it has been going up. And the more time that I spend on Etsy and the more time that I support keywords and I do more keyword research, I have realized that the views go up. So I'm really excited about that, increasing my listings, adding new listings every day because it is digital downloads for the most part. And so by adding new listings every day, I am increasing my chances of being seen on the Etsy algorithm person seeing my items, person buying from me, and also to including other social media platforms in with Etsy has been a great help for me. With that being said, when it comes to uploading on Etsy as well too, because starting off like posting five days a week is just crazy in my mind, I usually post on Tuesdays and Fridays, and I would schedule up my social media content for three or four times a week. So that'll be scheduled out so i don't have to worry about going back and trying to schedule content or create content and post it onto social media like i do all that before so i don't have to worry about that for the entire week and i would spend like a half an hour on the etsy platform do what i have to do post on tuesdays and fridays and that has actually garnered sales so this coming year for january i'm going to be launching as i said my blush planner edition and and it's going to consist of different planners, reading journals, and stickers. And so, again, if you're excited about that, if you are interested in getting a planner as a writer for your writing needs, then head across to jewelspecies.com forward slash shop and you can browse the wide selection. Okay, let us talk about the fact that I got 100 plus persons on my email subscribe list. I was actually a presenter for Romance Writers Week this October. Very honored, I was really excited about it because they reached out to me and they told me that they wanted me to present my target reader workshop, which is actually my target reader mini course. I was able to present that in front of hundreds of persons. The positive feedback propelled my business forward and I was able to add an additional 100 subscribers to my email list. Now, during this workshop, I was able to send every single audience member their own romance planner with stickers. So I had a little freebie. It was actually the romance planner that did not release us yet. So they got early edition romance planners with stickers for just attending the workshop. 
And for those who could attend, you can still grab that program planner at my shop. You can get it in principle or digital. So head across. If you're still interested in it, it's a red romance planner and you can have access to that. And if you want to know more about finding your ID readers, basically what we talked about in the target reader workshop, but even more in depth, I shared more examples and more tips on how to go about that. Then of course you can download the mini course that I have. So it's a target reader workshop mini course and it outlines five different ways you can go about finding your ideal readers and so that is available at jewelspages.com forward slash mini course i'll link those in the show notes but basically the whole reason why i was able to add over 100 persons on my email subscribe list was because of being a presenter for this romance writers week convention and so I was able to be in front of someone else's audience and present my product to them. And it had positive feedback. And so that is one of the things. If you want to grow your email subscriber list, you have to make sure that you're not just reaching out to persons in your audience, because your audience may be very small, but you have to want to collaborate with other persons in similar niches or in complementary niches that is going to help you to get in front of their audience as well. And so this is where, again, the lesson of reaching out to persons comes into play, because if I didn't post on social media, if I didn't reach out to the persons, that repercussion or that feedback would have not come back to me. And so I was now able to be able to present to these people and got positive feedback a lot of persons were asking questions and so now i have positive feedback i have um i have reviews and i have frequently asked questions from persons because i was able to validate this course and so that is one of the things that you need to do you really need to reach out to other persons in order to start growing your audience this episode is brought to you by Meet Your Milestones. It's my principal author planner store that specializes in author writing planners. Our most significant is our signature planner that is a genre-specific novel planner. As writers, we've got lots of notes while planning and editing our drafts. With the genre-specific planner, you can keep all your notes in one place. From brainstorming to publishing and marketing, the genre-specific planner has a section for every stage in writing and publishing. Visit meetyourmilestones at jewelspages.com forward slash shop to browse in the wide selection. One of the things that I did this year was I created a vision board and it turned out to be very, very helpful. If you listened to Q1 in these episodes, you would have seen a lot of the things that I wanted to do and I wanted to accomplish this year. And to help me mentally, I decided to write down my day and then I decided to drop it in my grateful jar. Now, if something great had happened today, I would map out the events, I would map out how I felt, I would fold it up and then I would place it in the jar. And if something bad has happened as well, I would write it down and I would date it. So for instance, my grandmother had passed away this year and I actually documented the entire thing which helped me to keep my anxiety in check. And I can't wait to open up this jar and see all the things that happened this year because it's something that I have never done. I think I talked about this on the podcast already that I have never thought about having a vision board or anything like this before because I don't believe in vision boards. At least I didn't believe in vision boards because I just thought it was just like, you know, just, just a thing. And so when I decide to do a vision board and then I see that the vision board has actually been fulfilled, like some of the things on this board have been fulfilled, I was really shocked. And so I am very excited at the end of this year to open up my great jar and be able to read the things that happened throughout the year and how I felt about what happened throughout the year. And also to at the time of this recording, this evening I'm going to be opening my goals jar to see what goals I have accomplished and what goals I still need to accomplish. So I'm really excited about that. And my vision board and my grateful jar, these are the two things that I want to continue 
in 2023, I'm going to have a few tweaks at it. Just this morning, I was talking to my cousin and I was explaining to her that not only do I want to just have those things, but I also too want to have pictures. I am not a picture person. I usually go out through the entire year and don't take our pictures for the entire year. It's weird, but I usually don't take pictures. And so what I want to do is this coming year, I do want to take out more pictures because TikTok and Instagram has inspired me. But I want to take out pictures of, if not every day, but throughout the entire year, every month, at least have one picture. So that at the end of the year, I can look back and I can see what happened in that year through pictures and not just feelings. So I'm really excited about that. I suggest that if you're looking to like reminisce about the past year and not just in photos, because photos is amazing, but also to in feelings, then definitely try out the grateful jar. Don't just write down things that you are like grateful for, but like I started writing down my entire day. I started writing down things that happened in a day, the fun things that happened and the bad things that happened in a day. I started writing down how I felt about what happened. And I would pull up all those things and I would drop them into my jar. My jar did get full after a while. It got full. And so I started writing down on a piece of paper and I would cut them out. And then I started going digital because my jar had no more space. So my suggestion is to get a good size jar that could hold about 365 pieces of paper and have that on your nightstand. I had it on my shelf and have it there and every day at the end of the day write down what is going on and how you felt it really helped me throughout this year and i'm really excited to open it and i'm really really excited for you to also try this and see how it works out for you in the year 2023. let's talk about what you want 2023 looks like for me so that's from january to march those first three months of 2023 what do they look like? And honestly, they look very, very, very busy. As you may or may not know, I am a seamstress by trade. And so I have a lot of clients that are booking their appointments in January. We have a lot of clients that want to get things sold. And it's going to be a really hectic year. This year, I bought a brand new sewing machine recently, so I have to go and pick that up in the brand new year. And so we have sewing. My business partner and I, we got sewing to do. And so for January, especially, we're going to be behind the sewing machine, sewing up a storm because that is our trade. However, when it comes to my online business and what I'm doing online, I do want to get 50 downloads per episode by the end of quarter one. I am at 25 downloads per episode. I want to get to 50 and I think that I can do it. I really, really think I can do it. I also do want to focus on my podcast and my course even more. I think I want to revamp my course, add some tweaks to it, go back, listen to it, and then add some tweaks, see how I can make it even better. And also too, with my podcast, I want to plan out the first three months. I want to. I have planned out the first three months, I believe, on my podcast already so i want to get down to doing the outlines for those and getting those recorded before the q1 is finished so that i won't have to be running around trying to record episodes day for day because that can get really tiring and can contribute to burnout number three and that is i want to have 200 listings on my Etsy shop. I am at 37, I believe, right now. And so I wanna have 200 listings by the end of quarter one, which sounds a little less because it's digital downloads and so 200 listings in three months, that is not a lot. I don't think that's a lot, but that's what I wanna do. That's my my goal. And I wanna have at least $100 in profit. So not $100 in revenue, no, $100 in profit, $100 I can take home with me which sounds sort of weird but that's what i want to do also too i want to have 500 subscribers on youtube by the end of quarter one so when january when march the 30th i believe rolls around i want to have 
500 subs on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to be actively and intentionally working towards that. Also, too, as a seamstress, we are going to be up, we are going to be launching our wholesale store and our Shopify store to sell accessories. So that is two things I'm going to be working on this year. I would say this year and not just this quarter, but this year, we're going to be working on that because we need to get our stores out there online. And we do have a certain amount of inventory that needs to get out that we have already sold. So we need to get those out. I'm really excited about that. I'm going to try to focus on social media a little bit more. I'm not a fan of social media. I really, really don't like social media. And it's not because I don't like to be on social media. Social media is cool. It's a nice time waster. But I don't like the fact that I have to sit and think about the captions. And I have to sit and think about the content. Really, I don't like that. And the hashtags. I'm not a big fan of those things. And so while, yes, social media is cool to be on and it's cool to see what other persons are doing, I also do know that there is so much time that is put into it to make sure that it goes out there. And I honestly want to spend more time on efforts that are long term, because when you post on social media, like when you post on Instagram, Instagram posts they, within the day, as far as I'm concerned, you no longer are getting any exposure from that post. But I want to use things like Pinterest a little bit more often. I open up my Pinterest account for the flower shop and I have been seeing tremendous results so far. So I want to focus my efforts on things that are going to be worthwhile but also to spend a little bit of time on social media. I'm going to be using my scheduling tools on social media to help me schedule my content. So every Sunday I'm going to be sitting down and I'm going to schedule probably the week or two weeks of content. So I don't have to worry about posting to social media. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. I really don't like to post on social media, but I'm going to try this coming quarter. Also to brand new reading challenge. Now I am so like, I'm very embarrassed about this because I had 24 books to read this year and I think I am at 23. And I think that I am reading a book right now. I am halfway through the book and I have not put on the audio version for about a month or two. And it's a little embarrassing. I really, 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 really thought that I would have been able to knock out that last book. I think it's, I think it's one more book I have to read. I think so. I really thought I was going to knock out that book before the year is up, but apparently not. At the time of this recording, I do not think that I'm going to be doing any more reading when it comes to reading of any novels coming down to the end of this year. I highly doubt I will do that. So I want to say that I am either at 22 or 23 books for this year, and I am proud, but I'm also embarrassed. So last year, I was able to do 12 books, I believe it is. So this year, I wanted to do 24. I'm at 22, I think. So I think reading 22 books in a year, I think for me, that's good because that's like almost two books a month. So for me, that is great because I can go an entire month without reading a book. I can go six months without reading a book. So that is that. I do want to open a brand new challenge on Goodreads because why not? So I'm going to be opening a brand new challenge on Goodreads. I am probably going to set it at 24 books again and see how we can knock out those books in the new year. But most likely for the quarter one, we could do about six books. That's two books a month. We'll see how it goes. Usually I would feel to read and then I would upload or get the audio versions of the books. I would sit there and I would listen. I'll be working. I'll be listening especially when I'm sewing and I'll be listening to these audiobooks. And then somehow there comes a point in my life where I stop reading for a while because life gets in the way and other things happen. And I'm just not in the mood to read. So hopefully quarter one, six books, that's the challenge. The next thing would be driving. Let's talk about driving. I, I feel like I have mentioned this a few too many times on this show. I have passed a written exam for the third time and yeah you know i'm excited i was given 18 months before my limits expired to get my official license and this year 2023 i want to make it happen because my license my permit officially expires next year not not 2023 but march 2024 
And I feel like knowing the kind of person that I am, the jewel that I know that I am, I feel like the entire 2023 is going to pass me and I am not going to ever learn how to drive. And the thing about it is that I, I know how to drive, but I'm just not legal to drive. If that makes any sense. There are still things I have to learn as a new driver. You know, there's many, many things I have to learn on the road. But I, I know how to drive. I just, I'm not legal to do it. And for some reason, everything that I am trying to achieve with this driving is only coming into the way. Like, there's so many obstacles that I am facing with driving, and it is driving me insane. And so this year, I want to learn how to drive. I really, really want to get my license. So we're going to see if that is going to work out this year. This is not a quarter one goal. This is a this year goal. This is a 2023 goal. For the next 12 months, I'm going to be trying my best to get my license. And we'll see how that journey goes. I'm going to be documenting it anyway. I would also like to save 1000 US dollars, which is pretty exciting. I am really good at saving money. But when it comes to having like an actual goal of how much I want to save, I've never really sat down and said, okay, this is how much I want to save at the end of the year, this is how much I want to have. But this year, I want to save at least a thousand US dollars in my account or wherever it may be, because I want to do something with this. I just want to see if it's possible. So we'll see if that happens. Um, we have on Pinterest, there's a lot of ways to go about saving money and so i have been looking at those things i want to see if that really works out for me and of course i mentioned i want to do more photos this month we're going to be doing our vision board i want to do more photos and i do want to have my great jar filled up again with all the great things and accomplishments that have been going throughout the entire year so i'm pretty excited for the year 2023 it is going to be amazing i'm going to be reaching out to other persons to be on my podcast i'm going to be reaching out to other persons to be on my youtube channel so it is going to be very interesting this year i'm really really excited to see how everything comes out i'm excited to see what are the negatives that are going to happen in this year as well too because we really talk about positives but i am always thinking about what is the downside of things that are going to happen this year so i am very intrigued to see that as well i believe i'm going to be doing my vision board in a few days and so i'll be able to add these into my vision board as i mentioned this evening i'm going to be opening my goal strat i'm going to be creating new goals for the new year i want to probably learn some new skills i said i wanted to learn new skills this past year and I don't even think I did. I'm not too sure. When I open my job, I'll see if I did learn any new skills. But this new year, I want to open, like, I want to learn a new skill. And when I say a new skill, I don't mean, like, graphic design. I mean, like, I want to learn to light a match. Wow. I want to learn to start a fire without matches. That's what I meant to say. That's what I want to learn to do. Things like that. Just little mundane, funny things that I want to learn, things that, you know, just doesn't really make much sense, but it's a cool skill to learn just to say, hey, I know how to start a fire without writing a match. I could rub two stones together. So the simple, silly skills like that, I do want to learn this year because I think it's fun. I think I have a good amount of goals for the first quarter that are very achievable as long as I stick with it. The beauty about it is that I believe that you cannot just start a new year and voila, you're going to be a new person and everything is going to fall into place. Like I do not believe that, that can happen. And so that's why I have been implementing some of these things long before so that the continuation process is not going to feel like I am launching into the deep end of something and I have absolutely no lifeboat or no life vest or whatever. And so I am excited. Before I go, I wanted to just dip into the great culture and read something for you. So I'm gonna shake it and then I'm gonna pick something and I'm gonna read something for you that happened this year. So there's so many different types of paper in this jar and it is amazing. So this is from the 29th of the first. So this is basically in the first month. This is like at the beginning of the year. And I said that I started editing my videos 
I created my thumbnails. I uploaded two videos to my YouTube channel. I created a Loom video and I sent in my entire application because at that time they were looking to hire persons to something they wanted persons to do online and they needed a Loom video for it. And I published two videos today on the 29th and I record another video for my channel. And that was only 29th. This is pretty exciting. So that was that. And I'm going to take one that is more of a different color paper. Let us see what happens. So different color paper. This is actually earlier on the 5th of the 1st when my siblings had their birthday. I woke up very early and filmed five house tour videos, edited three new videos, uploaded three other videos, and uploaded three final videos. That's a lot of video uploading and editing on that day. And of course, I'm going to pick one last one because I want to use a different color paper. So let's see. Okay, this was on the 11th of the 7th, 2022. So this was in July. Uh, today is Monday. And I had a really good weekend. I spent a weekend by one of my friends. And I got to go out on some dates. And it was fun. Um, I sent over my podcast episodes to my podcast manager. I was able to record a few more episodes for my gaming channel. And I did my nails. So this was exciting. So yeah, I want to thank you very much for listening to my podcast. You have made this year one of my best years so far. And literally without you listening, I would have never been able to surpass the standard seven episode mark that most podcasts don't cross. This year is coming to a close. And as one door opens, many, and as one door closes, many other doors of opportunity open to you and to me. So as we welcome the new year, may you accept the opportunities that come to you in 2023. Don't let anyone or anything hold you back. If I, Jewel Nicole, the girl who grew up in a toxic environment with serious insecurities and anxiety, can take a borrowed tablet and a laptop and head into my uncle's vehicle to record over 30 episodes this year, I firmly, firmly believe that you can do anything that you want to do once you put your mind to it. Thank you once again, and I will talk to you in the new year. May you have a wonderful end of year and a beautiful start to a new one. Keep writing. You were listening to the Books, Blogs, and Business podcast show with Jew and Nicole. All resources mentioned in this podcast can be found in the show notes of this episode. Share this episode with your favorite social media platform and tag me. By doing so, you will help many of your other fellow writers to learn how they can get their books visible and into readers' hands. And one more thing, head across to your favorite podcast player and leave Books, Blogs and Business a review so that I can know how much you really love the show. I'm Joe Nicole and until next week, keep writing!